Are you having a bad hair day? You may be able to blame the weather. On a humid day, straight hair can become wavy and curly hair can become frizzy. Hydrogen atoms within water molecules bond with certain proteins within your hair and cause it to change shape. In fact, human hair is so sensitive to slight changes in atmospheric humidity that it can be used to measure it. In 1783, Swiss physicist and geologist Horace Benedict de Saussure built the world's first hair tension hygrometer using human hair. This replaced earlier humidity instruments, known as hygrometers, that used charcoal, metal coils and sheep's wool. Nowadays, we often use a wet bulb thermometer instead. Whilst air temperature can be measured by thermometers whose bulb is dry, humidity is derived from thermometers whose bulb is swaddled in a damp cloth. Water needs heat energy in order to evaporate. This is called latent heat. That's why we feel cold when we get out of the bath or swimming pool. Or if we get too hot, our bodies react by sweating. Sweat or water on our skin takes latent heat away from our body as it evaporates, helping us to cool down. This evaporative cooling also affects a wet bulb thermometer and it can tell us how dry the air is. To understand why, take a bottle of water. What you can't see are the many tiny molecules of water that are escaping from the liquid into the air above. The liquid water is slowly evaporating into water vapour. But there are also many molecules of water vapour returning back into the liquid. If I put a lid on this water, eventually the same amount of liquid molecules are escaping as vapour molecules are returning. An equilibrium is reached. If I remove the lid and heat up the water so that it's now warmer than the air, its molecules move around faster and more of them will escape. There's an increase in evaporation whilst condensation remains the same. Back to the wet bulb thermometer. At first it has the same temperature as the dry bulb thermometer, but evaporation from its wet bulb causes it to cool down. As the wet bulb cools down, its rate of evaporation slows down until the rate of evaporation and condensation are the same. When the air is dry, there simply won't be as much condensation, so it will take more evaporative cooling for equilibrium to be achieved. The drier the air, the lower the wet bulb temperature compared to the air temperature. When the wet bulb temperature is the same as the air temperature, the rate of evaporation and condensation are already equal. The air is saturated and we say that the air has 100% relative humidity. Tiny water droplets will start condensing onto any surface. For example, specks of dust in the sky above us to form clouds or fog if it's the air near the surface that is saturated, or dew if it's the air near the ground that has 100% relative humidity. In fact, the dew point temperature is the temperature the air needs to be cooled to for dew to form, for example, when the temperature drops overnight. Just like the wet bulb temperature, when the dew point and air temperature are the same, the air has 100% relative humidity. It doesn't mean it will feel humid. A dew point of 5 Celsius won't feel humid at all, whatever the relative humidity. And that's because there's another definition of humidity, specific humidity. This is simply related to the amount of water vapour in the air. For example, how many grams of water vapour per kilogram of air. The more water vapour in the atmosphere, the higher the specific humidity and the higher the dew point. How high the dew point needs to be for it to feel oppressively humid is subjective. It will depend on lots of different factors, including the kind of climate you're used to. For example, if you're used to the climate of the UK, anything higher than a dew point of 15 Celsius may make you sweat. And how high does the dew point need to be for a bad hair day? Well, we'll let you be the judge of that. <laughs>